Hey, what's up guys? Today I am going to walk you through the code base which I have set up for the UI of our video review application. So we have been doing a lot of test driven development for our APIs, but then we haven't even seen anything on the UI to say what is going to happen. So I decided why don't we create a simple Next.js application which will be talking to our API for you know fetching the data and letting the user you know, view the videos and do whatever is you know, possible with the application. So what I will do in order to explain you about the setup is you know, I have the code already on GitHub. It's a public repository. So the front end repository is open for you to download and work with. Okay, I am not going to deep dive too much into the designs of it because I am really not very good with UI development. To be very frank, this is you know something which I could came up with after about you know working hard for an hour or two. So you can understand it takes time for me. But yes, what I have done is from whatever React development I do, right? I I have kind of bootstrapped the application and shared it with you so that when I am doing the API and in the near near future, I will you know publish this front end website on Vercel and I will publish the API on Heroku. So you will be able to use the application and also if you want to work with the UI, you are open to submitting PRs. Anyways, so let's get started. I have the code open in Visual Studio Code. This is the first level of commit which I had done after the initial setup. So you can see this is this was the first commit and then I added login page only. And inside login page only, these are some of the files which I have changed and we will go through the important ones soon. So I always have an editor config file which helps my Visual Studio code understand the indentation, the type of end of line it requires and all those kind of things. So this is a file which I always add. Git ignore, I think it comes by default. Prettier RC, again, it's my personal preference. I add it because then my Visual Studio Code's settings work perfectly with that code base. Now, these are some files like, you know, next-env.d.ts. These are generated because I'm using TypeScript, obviously. And the first thing which we should look at is page login index. It's a new file. What we have done here is a little bit of bootstrap. Okay. And then on this page, I have a card component where I am loading the load login form. If you want to see how the bootstrap UI or the theme is added, what I have done is I have added bootstrap in my package.json. Okay, I am using 5.0 beta 3. And I think it's app. No, not app. So inside app, I am using global SCSS right and inside styles global scss is importing bootstrap and one thing which you need to understand is because we are using bootstrap i am also using node sas which gives me the capability to have scss files instead of css which was the default thing when i installed next.js okay so yes those were some of the changes which i have done after installing next.js moving along I created this login page, which you can see pretty straightforward. It's, it's a login page component, which you know has some styling information. All of them are bootstrap classes, nothing fancy. And then I have this login form. My idea about creating reusable components is that if a page only has the login form, create the page, but don't keep the form on that page. Because then if tomorrow I need to have that login form inside a pop-up for any reason I have the flexibility because the form is going to complete its own functionality within that component okay the Ajax call will be made inside that you know, whatever it is so basically I need to ensure that my form can be rendered in any component and the user will be able to log in 
that's the whole idea okay so let's go into the login form now i have decided to use formic but this was my first level of commit where i just added the basic um markup so you can see this is a form with action going nowhere there's no javascript involved it's just pure html okay or rather i would say it's jsx so this was what i did with my first commit but then let's move on to my next commit which is let me see this is commit and branches main switch to branch okay let me switch to this branch and then i will have a few more commits added for me right so this is where i did quite a few changes to implement formic inside my login you know login form so let's go to github this commit is done the details have been added gone through rather let me open up this commit added formic along with yup for validation so what i have done here there are seven file changes let's go over them one by one okay um so package.json i have added formic i have added yup okay the typescript was changed to a next line that's why that red and that green but you get the point right okay that's uh, straightforward now if you go to login form there are quite a few changes right so let's look at that file inside visual studio code so inside components i have forms inside forms i have login form and then index.tsx okay what are we doing over here so i have login form function okay we will come to this later let's see what our return function does our return function is creating a tag called formic this is from the library i am not using validation message fair enough i must have removed it in the next commit but yeah so formic is initiated with initial values for the fields which are there in our form so i have email and i have password obviously because it's a login form right so this is the initial value which i have init um, you know initialized with plain text on submit i have a function which is the handle login function it gives us the values as first parameter and formic helpers if we need it as a second parameter okay for now we have just you know consoled the log values um okay on submit and then inside formic there is a very important and interesting thing which is either you have a validation function or you can add a validation schema now validation schema expects let me see if i can show you uh validation schema uh, no it doesn't open up but as you can see a yup schema or a function that returns a yup schema okay so that's what it expects and what i have done based on that is i have created a file inside schemas called login schema it exports a constant where i have the entire yup object which defines the shape of what kind of validation we are expecting so if you see we have initiated yup okay we created an object out of it inside the shape function we have email and we have password and then whatever is mentioned in side email are the rules for example yep expects that this email is a string and not a number it expects that the field is required and we expect that the email uh, is email field is actually an email field you know it's a valid email field with an at the rate and dot something right so that thing is handled here the password again we expect a string we expect that the password is required and it should have minimum 6 characters so now as you can see what happens is using yup our validation has become very very easy you just define the rules over here as you know a constant you export it and you import it in here and your component is so clean so i would definitely encourage you to look at this component library or this plugin if you don't already use it because 
formic along with yup for validation is a very good combination okay so now going with the flow this tag was created inside it you know we get this variables from formic which has values handle change handle blur errors and touched okay let's see so we have a form tag inside that i have bootstrap markup now if you see a lot of formic examples you may find formic labels and some custom components but believe me it is not mandatory to use them formic does allow you to have your complete custom ui and still you will be able to use those form behaviors okay so that's the reason i kept it as normal html tags so you can see this is a label it says email address it's a type email name email values now values is email because i had set this with the initial values okay and we are deconstructing it from whatever is available okay and then on change this handle change function is available and on blur this handle blur function is available which we are using you need to understand that these are functions available with formic okay so you know certain things which you do with every input field inside react like on change you know set a state all those things for you is taken care of you don't need to worry about that okay so that's the beauty that i was talking about and then there is our validation if we have errors okay which is from here and the errors dot email is present and touched dot email so it also checks whether you have made any change in the field or not then we do show a validation error with the errors dot email where the message is present otherwise we don't do it a very similar structure is followed for the password field and then we have the login button and that's about it so let's see what's the next thing which we have done so we have seen the login form components form the validation message component is something which i haven't added yet basically if you see what is happening is every time i have to write so much of code just to show an error message however what i have done here is I simplified the code a bit. We get an error message uh, component with Formic, and because we wanted a custom class, so I wrapped this inside a div with error message, and we send the name of the field. So what happens is, let me give you a demonstration. I'll go to the application, and right now it's autocomplete, so it will be a problem. But as you can see, this is showing the validation, and when I you know blur it also says that should be six characters now what i will do is instead of this entire code only this much and i am done similarly in this let me save my changes it is compiled and if everything is correct the behavior really doesn't change yes it does. and then you can see the exact behavior so things are working fine what next so we have seen the login form we have seen the validation message component package.log.json we don't need to worry about that um what have i done here i have removed a lot of things and okay i added just a welcome to home kind of a simple message that's something which you can ignore login schema we saw how the schema is used for validation and then the last thing is global scss where i added one class which is validation error where i have a color of danger which is coming from the bootstrap variables available and font size is small so that i can keep it a little bow little subtle instead of this big so yeah with that done we have our login component ready if i open the console inspect element open up the console and let's just have add our password and if i hit login you can see the 
email and the password which we consoled over here is visible to us and if we have some validation errors it doesn't allow us to submit so this is a good start for us and this is the place where the email login functionality is kind of ready for making an ajax call so let's see what we have done in our next commit okay so in here we have handled the user login and added a cookie because from our api we would need to send the sanctum token right for the user but then the user needs to store that token so that it can send it in subsequent requests so we decided that we will keep the you know token inside a cookie hence i have axios and js cookie Okay, this is for the front end package.json lock.json changed because i had a you know, package json update and now let's look at the login form so first what change have i made i will revert this change and branches switch to branch look at the commits it says yeah this is the one um switch to commit come over here let me look at the form first so we haven't made any change over here what we have done is we deconstructed email password from values and we are sending that to a function inside our auth service called email and password so which means we have a service class which is inside the service folder services login oh sorry services auth service okay this is a class where we have a static function called handle login it makes an ajax call okay makes an ajax call axios post to this url obviously right now these are hard coded we will change it later don't worry about it but yes with the username and password now then if i don't get a status code of 200 i'm saying please try to log in again if i get a 200 i'm using the cookies dot set method from the cookies package js cookie right i'm storing the i'm using this key as the to, uh, no the key for storing inside the cookie and the token as the value same goes over here data dot username i haven't stored anything else from the user object i think if i have the token and the username or rather the name it's more than enough for me for the ui rest everything will be done by the api so let's see um i haven't done any redirection which is fine i think i still need to do that but yeah you get the point right so this is the final part and now let me clear everything in the cookie am i running my api i do um, let me see if i have added the cedar in my code base i'll show you the api code later this is really not the video where i'm handling the api code but yeah definitely don't worry i will show you i have a basic you know database cedar where i'm creating a user with my email and password at the rate one two three which means ideally if i put the correct password it should work so hit login what happened connection refused because i have stopped the server for sure i understand your problem let's hit once more okay this is fine it's a 200 which means now my application has these two tokens Amitabh Roy and token 8 then this is the token which comes from sanctum okay if you want we can clear it out delete all cookies refresh the page and we try to log in again once we do 
we get these two things inside our cookie, which means our code is working. So yes, this is how I have structured my code so far. As you can see, I have I have basic components you know, divided uh, within the page so that you know, the, how do you say, the responsibilities are pretty well defined. Each and every component has only a specific thing to do and it is doing it perfectly. We have even splitted our validation error messages into its own you know, component so that you know, we don't have to repeat so much of the logic, right? And this is this is something which I find really interesting with React that you know you can have small small components. I am not saying you can't do with Vue, but this kind of API really encourages me to do this. But again, that's my view. So you understand how things were composed in in terms of components. Then you know the handle login is really not doing too much. It is just ensuring that it is calling a service class and its part is done okay because these kind of heavy lifting in terms of ajax calls and doing any business logic should not be inside the component it should be inside the service because it is quite possible that the service will be reused or your code can be tested okay so that's the reason we have services and the service is doing its part where it is making the ajax call i will you know at some point have an HTTP service as well so that I don't refer to Axios directly inside my services. Every service will call the HTTP service and the, which means tomorrow instead of Axios, if I am trying to change the implementation, I change it only on the HTTP service and rest of the service, they really don't need to understand what is going behind the scenes because they just understand that they will call the HTTP service and call the post method and they are done. Okay, so yeah, we make the API call. If we have some errors, we are handling it. And if we have success, we are creating the cookie for our for future use. So yeah, that's about it, guys. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.